In the previous tutorial, we looked at uh, the impedance Smith chart and we looked at how to perform some uh, impedance changes and matching when we had uh, capacitors, resistors and inductors connected in series. In this tutorial, we will be looking at the admittance chart instead, which is more suited when we have elements in parallel. We will also be looking at how to manipulate uh, impedances connected in parallel, such as capacitors, inductors and resistors. First of all, as usual, we'll have to go to Product Options and then select the frequency of operation. As usual, we'll select 1 GHz. Tick Single Point and Apply. We'll then go onto the Global Units tab and we will select units of nanoharries for the inductance and picofarads for capacitance. The next step is opening a circuit schematic and we'll call it shunt match. We will need to add a port to our schematic so as to be able to measure the reflection coefficient and hence the impedance at the specific point of interest. We can do this in two ways, either by clicking on the icon in the menu up here or just by pressing Ctrl P and placing the port on the schematic like so. We will start with a simple RL circuit where we've got a resistor and an inductor connected in parallel. So we'll just press Ctrl L and we'll fetch a resistor and an inductor and place them on the schematic like so. We then need to insert a ground connection which we can do in two ways again either by selecting it from the menu up here or just by pressing Ctrl G. Let us assign initial values to our resistor and inductor. We'll choose a resistance of 125 ohm for the resistor and an inductance of 13.2 nanoharries for the inductor. Now we can set up a graph which will allow us to represent the reflection coefficient seen at port 1 and also to superimpose a grid on the polar plot of the reflection coefficient which will allow us to read the admittance seen by the port. Remember that uh, the Smith chart is nothing but a grid that we superimpose onto the polar plot of the reflection coefficient and this grid can be of two types, either impedance as we used before for serious connected element or emittance which is more suited to elements connected in parallel. So we'll go on to graphs, select new graph, again we'll call it shunt match and then what we need to do is change this grid to an admittance grid. To do this we just right click on the chart click on properties and then on the grid tab you can see that you can select whichever grid is more suited to your needs. In this case we'll deselect the impedance grid and select the admittance grid. You can also see that if you wanted to you could display both at the same time. Also as usual we will change the contour density to coarse so as to make our chart more legible. Click on apply and then OK. Now we need to add a measurement to the graph. As we said, the measurement that we need is the reflection coefficient and then upon it we've got a grid set up which will allow us to read off the admittance directly. So right click on the chart, select add a new measurement, select S11 as your measurement, the data source name as shunt match, click apply and then OK. Now simulate. We can add a marker to the chart by pressing Ctrl M and clicking on the point of interest. Now you can see that the marker readout in this case is in terms of normalized impedance. This is signified by the lowercase r and lowercase x which represent the normalized resistance and reactance respectively. We can change the marker readout quite easily by right clicking on the chart, going on to properties and then choosing the display type to be admittance. What we can also do is denormalize the admittance to the uh, normalizing impedance, which is 50 ohms. If we now click Apply and then OK, we can read the values of the admittance in Siemens directly off the chart. What I must point out, however, is that Siemens is not a very common unit in RF and microwave frequencies. What is more useful is to use millisiemens, because otherwise, as you can see, you end up with uh, this sort of numbers. So what we can do to do that is just go on to Project Options 
And then on the Global Units tab, we can choose the conductance to be in millisiemens. Click on OK, and then Simulate. Now you can see that uh, in our marker readout, the admittance units have been changed to millisiemens, which make things a lot more legible. Talking about legible, we'd like to be able to see the numbers on the chart a little bit more clearly. And hence, what I can do is right-click on the chart yet again, go on to Properties, and then go on to the Fonts tab, and select Axis Numbers. And we can then change this Axis font to 12, and also make it black in an attempt to make the numbers on it more visible. Click on OK, Apply. Now you can see that all the numbers on the chart are very visible and we can read out directly the numbers that we need. So we've seen how to set up an admittance chart, how to change the marker readout to admittance and how to denormalize this admittance and also how to change its units to make it easier to handle. Now let's go back to the normalized admittance that we had before. Let's right click on the chart, go on to properties and then onto the markers tab and uh, decide to have the e admittance normalized. Click on apply and OK. First of all, I think it is important to point out how we normalized uh, admittances as opposed to how we normalized the impedances because this is sometimes a confusing issue with students. So with an impedance, what happens is that you get your actual impedance and you divide both the uh, resistance and the reactance by uh, the normalizing impedance. In this case, you get your actual admittance and then you divide uh, both the uh, conductance and the susceptance by the normalizing admittance. And the normalizing admittance is the inverse of the normalizing impedance. So, uh, if you look at your schematic again here, you can see that you've got an impedance for your port of 50 ohms. This means that you will have a normalizing admittance of 1 over 50 ohms, which is 20 millisiemens. And now you divide both the uh, real and imaginary part of the admittance by your normalizing admittance. And you end up with the point that's shown on the graph, 0.4 minus 0.6 J. So suppose that the admittance that you see at port 1 is not the admittance that you desired. You actually want to see an admittance of 8 plus 16 J millisiemens from port 1. How do you go about uh, making the impedance seen at port 1 appearing as the target impedance that you desire? Well, first of all, you have to be able to represent your target point on the admittance chart. So, to do this, we need to normalize our target admittance by using our normalizing admittance. So, we will divide both the conductance and the susceptance by 20 millisiemens. And we'll end up with a point of normalized admittance, which is located along the 0.4 constant conductance circle and along the 0.8 constant susceptance line. And this point is just shown here. Now, since uh, you are on the same constant conductance circle for both admittances, you won't have to do anything to the uh, resistor itself because the um, conductive part of the admittance is going to be the same. All you need to do is move down along the constant conductance circle to the point of susceptance that you require. So the susceptance of the initial point is minus 0.6, and the susceptance of the final point is 0.8. We can see that the difference between the normalized susceptances is 1.4. Now that we found the difference in a normalized manner, we have to denormalize this difference. So we have to multiply by the normalizing emittance to find out this difference in actual units, so in millisiemens. Now, because we are um, changing a negative susceptance into a positive one, the only element that you can use to achieve this is a capacitor, which has a positive susceptance, which is equal to omega c. So if you just equate omega c to the susceptance that you require to move from the initial point to the target point, you can work out the value of the capacitor that you need for this to happen. And this value turns out to be 4.47 picofarads. 
Now, if we go back to our schematic and uh, make a little bit of space here to insert a capacitor in shunt with the other elements, and we select the value of this capacitor to be the one calculated, 4.47 picofarads, and then we simulate, we can see that we have achieved exactly what we set out to do, i.e. moving the admittance seen by port 1 from our initial point to a target point of 0.4 plus 0.8 J. So in this case we started with an inductive admittance and we turned it into a capacitive admittance. Now let's do the opposite. Let's start with the capacitive admittance and turn it into an inductive one. So let's go back to our schematic and remove the inductor and also let's change the values of the resistor and capacitor. We'll uh, change the value of the resistor to 83 ohms and the value of the capacitor to 1.3 picofarads. Now we can work out the admittance of this network algebraically knowing that this is going to comprise of a conductance equal to 1 over 83 ohms, which is 12 millisiemens, and also a susceptance, which is equal to omega C, uh, and in this case uh, turns out to be 8 millisiemens. We also know that the normalizing emittance, which is equal to 1 over the normalizing impedance, is equal to 20 millisiemens. So let's simulate and go back to our graph. So the marker readout shows the normalized admittance, which is signified by the lowercase letter G, which represents the conductance, and the lowercase letter B, which represents the normalized susceptance. We've seen that we can change this readout uh, and denormalize it, so we can just do that to verify that the admittance that we calculated algebraically is the same as the one the marker of office is giving us. So right-click on the chart, go on to properties and then onto the markers tab pick denormalize to 50 ohms click on apply and then OK and you can see that of course uh, Micro Office has made a more accurate calculation than the one uh, shown earlier but we are pretty much in the same ballpark now let's turn our marker readout back to its normalized value because when it comes to impedance matching which we will be doing in a moment this is actually more useful click on apply and OK and what we want to do now is change the admittance seen at port 1 from 12 plus 8J millisiemens, uh, which corresponds to a normalized admittance of 0.6 plus 0.4J, into uh, an admittance of 12 minus 16J millisiemens. And uh, this uh, target uh, admittance has a normalized uh, value of 0.6 minus 0.8 J, which is shown on the chart. This value was of course obtained by dividing both the conductance and the susceptance part of this admittance by the normalizing admittance, which is 20 millisiemens. Now, as we did before, we have to calculate the difference in susceptance between the starting point and our target point. So the susceptance at the target point is minus 0.8 and uh, the uh, susceptance at the start point is 0.4. So uh, the difference between these two points in susceptance is minus 1.2. Now we have to denormalize this value and uh, we denormalize it by multiplying it by the normalizing admittance Y0 and we end up with a uh, susceptance of minus 24 millisiemens. So we need to add an element which has this susceptance to be able to move from the start point to the desired point. Because the susceptance is negative, the only element that can do this is an inductor. So now what we can do is equate the admittance of an inductor to the admittance that we've calculated and this allows us to calculate uh, the value for the inductor which will take us to the desired point. And this value turns out to be around 6.54 nanoharries. So now if we go back to our schematic and we add an inductor in shunt with the capacitor and the resistor and set its value to the value that we've calculated, 6.54 nanoharries, and then simulate. Now if we go back to our graph, 
we can see that the admittance seen by port 1 now is the admittance that we wanted to achieve.